Buongiorno ragazzi, Or. buon pomeriggio, buonasera, buonanotte, depending on at what time of the day, afternoon of, or night you're listening, uh, watching this video, right? So this is the third of our virtual classes, and today we are going to talk about a quite important topic, but I think that the the things we managed to do before uh, the semester switch to a virtual platform will really help us in learning this quickly. So the topic for today is the edit verbs. Hopefully this sounds familiar to something that you remember vaguely about what we have done so far. So, first let's refresh our memory regarding what verbs are. Verbs are the words we use to talk about actions, right? To play is an action, to write is an action, to sleep is an action, to be is also an action, right? And we also said that in Italian we have two big groups of verbs, depending on how these are conjugated. Remember also that conjugation is the action of changing the form of a verb so that it matches its subject, so that it matches the person or people that are doing the action, right? So two big groups of verbs depending on how you conjugate them. We have irregular verbs. These are the ones that don't follow a pattern and that's why we have to memorize them word by word. We have done two irregular verbs, right? Essere and avere. To be and to have. And I hope you recall that we had to memorize them, right? Word by word. Io sono, tu sei, lui è. Noi siamo, voi siete, loro sono. That's not following a pattern. I just told you to memorize it, right? To learn it by heart. Same thing with avere. Io ho, tu hai, lui ha. Noi abbiamo, voi avete, loro hanno. No pattern, just memorize, right? And then we moved on to the regular verbs. The ones that do follow a pattern. And these are our friends because we don't need to learn all their forms. We only learn a pattern that they follow, right? Remember these things? I hope you do. I also hope you remember the are verbs. What are are verbs? They are the one group of verbs that we have learned that follow a pattern. Right? What is that pattern? Let me remind you. I'll remind you using a verb we have used a lot, cantare, which in case you don't remember means to sing. So remember what we're supposed to do in order to conjugate these verbs. There's a first step. The first step is getting rid of the last three letters of the verb, right? So I get rid of the E, of the R, and the A. And I'm left with a part of the verb that is known as the stem. And then the stem remains the same for all conjugations, right? So if you look at the table there, you will see that cant, that little bit of the word that is left after I get rid of the E, the R, and the A, is the same for all conjugations, right? And then what do I do? I add some endings. And those were the ones that we needed to memorize, right? So we learned that the ending for io is o, for tu is i, for lui and lei is a, for noi is iamo, for voi 
is ate for loro is anno, right? So when we add the endings to the stem, in the case of cantare, we have io canto, tu canti, lui canta, noi cantiamo, voi cantate, loro cantano. And as you guys know, what these mean are basically I sing, io canto, you sing, you one person, right? Tu canti, lui canta, he sings, lei canta, she sings, noi cantiamo, we sing, voi cantate, you guys sing, and loro cantano, they sing, right? This is an are verb. It follows a pattern. And the cool thing is that we can do this with any other are verb. Remember, mangiare means to eat, right? We do the same thing. We get rid of the ending and we have yo mangio, tu mangi, lui mangia, noi mangiamo, voi mangiate, loro mangiano. Tornare, to return, same thing. Io torno, tu torni, lui torna, noi torniamo, voi tornate, loro tornano. And so on and so forth with any and all of the are verbs I gave you in that vocab list, right? So today we are going to learn another group of verbs that also follow a pattern. And these are, of course, not the are verbs, but they're quite similar. They are the ere verbs. So let's look at this ere verb caref carefully for a second. It's correre. Correre means to run, right? And these also follow a pattern. So, if you look at what I'm doing here in this table, I'm basically doing the same thing, right? Three steps. Step one, get rid of the last three letters, in this case, E-R-E. -E. And then I'm left with cor, that's the stem of the verb, and it's the same throughout. And the last step, I add some endings, right? O, E, E, Yamo, Ete, Ono. Now, those among you who remember the endings for the are verbs will have noticed that these are very similar, but not, not the same, right? So the steps of the pattern do not change, but the endings do change. They change a little bit. Let's look at those changes in more detail. So, here again is cantare. It's an are verb. And this is the way we apply the pattern, right? We add the endings o, i, a, yamo, a, te, ano. Now let's look at the ere verb I just gave you. Correre. The endings are o, i, e, yamo, I want us to focus on the endings alone, because that's what changes. So let's separate them, okay? Here we have the endings for are verbs. O, i, a, yamo, ate, ano. And on the other side we have the endings for the ere verbs. O, i, e, Yamo ete ono. Please look at these two tables for a second. Please compare them, and you will see that there are three endings that are the same, right? The ending for io, the first ending, in both is o. Right? Yo canto, yo corro. The ending for tu is also the same in both tables. Tu canti, tu corri. And then the ending for noi is also the same. Noi cantiamo, noi corriamo. Okay? Let's look at those which are different now. 
the ending for Louis and Lei is different. For the are verbs, it's a. Lui canta, he sings. Lei canta, she sings. For the ere verbs, it's not a, it's e. Lui corre, he runs. Lei corre, she runs. Right? So that's the first ending that is different. The second ending that is different is the voi ending. Right? The second to last ending. For the are verbs, it's ate, voi cantate, you guys sing. For the ere verbs, it's ete, voi correte, you guys run. And the last ending that is different is the loro ending. For the are verbs, it's ano, loro cantano. They sing. For the ere verbs is ono. Loro corrono, they run. Right? So, if you think about it this way, you will notice that you actually don't have to learn a lot of things in order to know how to conjugate the ere verbs. Because you already know what the steps are for conjugation, right? Getting rid of the last three letters, using the stem throughout, and then adding the endings. And you also know a set of endings that is very, very similar to the endings of the ere verbs. So the only thing you have to learn is three new endings. E instead of A for Louis and Lei, Ete instead of ate for voi, ono instead of ano for loro, right? And maybe for some of you it will also be hel helpful to notice that the are verbs are using the vowel that comes from the ending in both lui and le and voi, right? It's canta from cantare and cantate from cantare as well. They're using that vowel, right? And the same thing happens with the ere verbs. It's corre from correre and it's correte from correre again, right? So the are verbs are using that a for the lui, le, and voi endings, and the ere verbs are doing the same, but with the e that comes from their infinitive. Right? If you want to learn it this way, of course, you have to be careful and remember that for the voi ending, it's not the same, right? Because the are verbs do it, cantano, but the ere verbs do not. They do ono instead of eno, right? However, I think this is a minor difficulty because, again, the only thing you need to do is to learn these three new endings that I am pointing you at with these little arrows, right? E instead of A for Lui and Lei. Ete instead of Ate for Voi. Ono instead of Ano for Loro. Okay? So this is the new set of regular verbs that we are learning. And this is the pattern that they follow. In this video, I'm also going to show you a little list of ere verbs. This is the part where you get to celebrate that this is not a class that takes place in an actual classroom. Because if it were, this is the part where I would tell you that you need to memorize this table, <laughs> right? Since these are virtual classes, 
and we don't have the same amount of time to dedicate to our learning, I am not going to ask you to memorize this table. So I'm only giving it to you for reference so that you can become familiar with a few verbs that follow this pattern. A few ative verbs, in other words. I will, however, pronounce them for your benefit. Chiedere. That means to ask. Correre. We just did it. That means to run. Spanish speakers will learn this one very easily, right? Crescere. To grow. Again, crescere. Notice the sound of that SC, right? Crescere. The chidere to the side. Very, very easy for English speakers. It's basically the same, but you need to remember the soft sound of the C with the I, right? De chidere. Discutere. Again, very easy to discuss. Dividere. To divide. Very, very easy. Mettere. To put. Notice that this does not mean to put in, right? Because that's what Spanish speakers will be tempted to translate it as, but it's just to put mettere. Prendere, to take. Ridere, to laugh. Rispondere, to answer. Also easy, I believe. Rompere, to break. Scendere, to descend or to go down. Scendere. Scrivere, to write. Spendere, to spend. Vedere, to see. Vivere, to live. You might also remember that we had already learned a verb, an are verb, that we translate as to live, abitare, right? What's the difference between abitare and vivere? It's very simple. Abitare means to live in a place, right? Yo abito a New York. I live in New York. Vivere just means to live in the sense of being alive. Okay? Good. So, these are the ere verbs. The activity that I'm going to give you is very, very simple. I'm just going to give you two of these verbs, the, one you're, the ones you're looking at right now, and I'm going to ask you to conjugate them meaning to fill in the little tables that I'll give you with the correct forms of the verb, right? So you just go back to the part of the video where I show you the table for correre, you follow the steps of the pattern, you add the right endings, and you're done with your homework, okay? And that's it for today. I hope that you guys are not finding the quarantine too difficult please let me know of anything you need either via email or whatsapp and I also want to give you a heads up in case you haven't received communications about this the university not just hostels but the whole of CUNY the whole university of the city of New York has decided to have yet another small break because many students are finding it very difficult understandably to switch to an online model okay so they're gonna give us a little bit more time to adjust to this very soon I don't know the dates yet as soon as I do I will let you know okay but we're gonna have probably a few days three days I hope to readjust and Hostos is also aware of the fact that many of you guys have difficulty finding equipment for your online classes okay if that is the case either for you or for someone you know who is a hostel student please let me know via email send me the information either your own information or the information of that person that needs equipment, right? That needs, uh, I think they're going to distribute tablets, right? For students to be able 
to follow their online classes. But first, the college needs to learn about that need. So let me know. And if you can, send me the MPLIT number, the ID number of the student in need. And I'll send this information. I'll forward this information to the right people at Hostos. And we will get you your equipment so that you can take your classes online, OK? Thank you guys, grazie, and I hope you did not find this video particularly boring. I know that the music in the background is rather slow. That's the music my small children use for sleeping. So there you go. <laughs> Ciao ragazzi, buongiorno, buonasera, buonanotte rilassatevi hm? e fate il vostro lavoro, fate il compito. Ciao ciao!